Do you know your birth story? I'm curious what, what, you, what you know about your birth story. Do you know how many, how many pounds and ounces you weighed? <laughs> how long, a few of us, yeah. Uh, what time of day you were born, maybe? Uh, any, any other, call it out if you, if you have any other things you remember, yeah. It was raining. It was raining, it's like something about the weather. No. Hurricane. Hurricane, yeah. <laughs> say, say again. A snowstorm. Oh, you broke your mom's tailbone. Oh. Sorry, mom. <laughs> Born at home, 19 below. Oh, a lot about weather. This is interesting. Yeah. Had to be in an incubator for two weeks. There's a, a, an important detail, yeah. My father was at the opera. At the opera. Oh. <laughs> ah, also telling, yes. Cesarean. A cesarean section, C-section, yes. These little bits, medical details, I, this, the birth announcements that we see so often, that is all it is, right? The, birth, the height and the weight and the... Maybe the, the exact time, I think mine was 6.08 a.m. How many weeks, how many, how many weeks the pregnancy lasted? And, and then maybe we hear a little about the weather. <laughs> <laughs> Did anybody hear that you were born a miracle, an absolute unexpected possibility, something new that had never happened before, that everything in the entire universe had conspired to this moment bring you with your unique possibilities for salvation and redemption to the world. Was anybody, you weren't, no one told you that, huh? <laughs> It, it, it does. Oh, good. Yes, I'm, I'm glad they're printing that on the birth certificate now. Anna says, <laughs> "In this season, we're telling these stories of well, one very famous story of a, a birth that was heralded by angels, to which the wisest, maybe wealthiest kings in the world came to travel to rejoice and celebrate." A birth that, in the story of Matthew, you know, it, when it when they tell the, the birth story of Matthew, it starts with the genealogy and goes back. How many generations can you go back in your family? How many people can you name? You go back, great grandparents, uh, great great grandparents. I can't get there. Great 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 grandparents. Can anybody do that? Mary's not here. Oh, Stephanie, awesome. Joyce, yeah. Hey, seven. Can you go back seven? Great. How many can you go back, Joyce? I'm ashamed to tell you how many. <laughs> You've spent a lot of time with this. <laughs> Wait, can, 20? 20 years. 20 years you worked on it. Can you, can you go back, so here, can you go back 42 generations? Maybe, maybe not. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's the way the story starts in, in Matthew. 42 generations. So and so begat so and so begat so and so begat so and so. If you've ever tried to read the Bible cover together, you know that there are just pages and pages of this, all this lineage, all this finding one's place in the world. There was a little bit of magic in my birth story as I know it. There was a, I was, I was um, turned, you know, breach uh, a few days before my due date. And my mom thought the, the thing to do would be to go to Ellen. Ellen, who I called Ellen the big one um, as a child. Ellen was, was about this tall, <laughs> but she had a big spirit. She was, she was the psychic who my mom would see. And Ellen, they, you know, had done the ultrasound and saw I was breached, and Ellen did something with a crystal, and I, I'm embarrassed telling you this story because it's the kind of thing I don't really believe in, but apparently I turned around, the ultrasound.
ultrasound showed it, and I was able to have uh, an uncomplicated birth. The other story that, that my family tells about it is the, the horoscope coming in to be read aloud after I was born. <laughs> As my mom's and the female doctor and another lesbian couple friend of theirs and uh, I think there were one or two more women, all, all women surrounded, they, they took out the horoscope and read, people born on this day will be surrounded by members of the opposite sex. <laughs> So a little magic in my birth story, but it's still not quite, oh, this epic tale of, of cosmic proportion in which you are thrust into it as a protagonist. I've been reading an uh, author named David Abram, who is a, a part of a, a generation of eco-philosophers trying to bring together the Western tradition of philosophy, he's working with the phenomenologists and that, that lineage, together with indigenous aboriginal understandings of how, who human beings are and, and how the world works. He's trying to, to put these things together. He begins his book by talking about his time having access to indigenous shamans in Indonesia by showing up as a sleight of hand magician himself. He was given a research grant to go and, and study with these shamans, but the grant was predicated not on showing up as a scholar, but as a fellow magician. So he had spent years doing sleight of hand at the mall and so on. And the picture he paints well, I'm going to tell you more about it another time, but th th this is what he said that I want to tell you today. He talks about the aboriginal dream time stories, the, the, the songs, this epic songs of how all the world is put together. Every place in Australia has a, a, a piece of this dream cycle, this dream story cycle. Every, every piece of land, every area has a verse that corresponds. And it talks about something that happened there during the dream time, during that time when people and animals could become one another, during that time when things were not quite as fixed as they seem to be today. But in that saga, in that epic saga, People have their own birth stories reflected back. This is how it works. The Aboriginal Australians believe that the conception, the moment of conception, does not occur through sperm fertilizing egg. That sex is a way of opening the gateway to fertilization. But the moment of fertilization itself happens at the quickening, at the moment that a pregnant woman feels the baby move, that's when the soul of the child who is to be born enters her womb. And so, because this is an important moment, this moment of true conception, she remembers exactly where she is. And she goes and tells the elders of her tribe where exactly she felt that first kick that first sensation of life. And the elders go and they inspect this place. They take a look and try and understand exactly where it is, and they figure out which verse in the Dreamtime saga of stories corresponds to this exact place, because that tells them whose spirit whose dream soul has entered this woman. And that child, when they are born, now owns that piece of the verse. That child has been welcomed into not only their tribe and the world, 
but has been given a particular place in the epic story of everything that has ever been. I was just struck when I read David Abrams' account of that. Help me out here, Jim. Am I, am I using this one or this one? That's on. Okay, great. I thought, I thought we lost this one. Thank you. How far we are in our rational, modern world from knowing ourselves to be born a part of this grand epic story of the cosmos. My family tries to remedy a little this at birthday times by singing uh, God Danced the Day You Were Born. Is anybody familiar with this song? The angels did the bump to Gabriel's horn. God danced the day you were born, so grateful for the gift of you. I saw God do the funky chicken. <laughs> Stepping and kicking in blue suede shoes. I saw God do the boogaloo woo. Just thinking about the gift of you. And it always ends like this. Now some folks say that long ago, God could not dance to save her soul. But people, I've seen her shake that jelly roll. <laughs> Just thinking about the gift of you. <laughs> or how about this? After 14 billion years of dancing, colliding stardust, and four billion years of a watery planet circling a star at just the right distance for life to evolve and thrive, after hundreds of millions of years of evolution brought a species of primates to the point where it could tell stories and learn to cooperate in vast numbers, cooperate so effectively as to dominate the whole planet, after tens of thousands of years of people experimenting with far-ranging cultural modes of finding endlessly creative ways to bind together with myth and ritual and song and dance, after some of these humans began to segregate themselves from the rest of the planet's ecosystem, began to attune more closely to a only human world of alphabetic language, began to reshape the world with domesticated agriculture. In a time just after these same humans harnessed the resources of the world they had now found themselves alienated from, and their growing understanding of physics the resources and their understanding used to quickly upend life across the planet through an industrial revolution as this society of industrial growth roared to its inherent limits. And the planet, which they had forgotten could speak, began to raise its voice back. You were born. You were born a witness to the wonder of earthlings breaking through the planet's atmosphere for the first time, venturing beyond our blue boat home. A witness to toxins filling the skies, to rising seas and the sixth mass extinction of our biosphere born to a humanity unsure of its humanness, unsure if it any longer belonged in the world it had tried to make an object, an alien other. You were born 
to uh, people who had colonized and been colonized, born into a family that had been dislocated over and over, perhaps a family of adapters, of people seeking new hope, new possibilities, new opportunities, a people trampling over sacred ground they hardly knew. You were born one more redeemer, one more wondrous life force capable of awe and sorrow and love and hope. You were born to the tribe of stardust, to the Sapiens clan, just at the moment when we were becoming viscerally aware that our whole planet shares a common destiny. You were born with gifts and a calling, a unique role to play in a time of great change. You were born from the vast and mysterious into the finite and crying particular existence of you. Your humanness and your cosmic majesty, the simple truth of your DNA and the divine wonder of your being at all, calling to you with a holy, urgent demand that you live the life only you can. What to Remember When Waking by David White. In that first hardly noticed moment in which you wake, coming back to this life from the other more secret, movable, and frighteningly honest world where everything began. There is a small opening into the new day which closes the moment you begin your making your plans. What you can plan is too small for you to live. What you can live wholeheartedly will make plans enough for the vitality hidden in your sleep. To become human, to be, to be human is to become invisible. Mm. To be human is to become visible while carrying what is hidden as a gift to others. To remember the other world in this world is to live in your true inheritance. You are not a troubled guest on this earth. You are not an accident amidst other accidents. You were invited from another and greater night than the one from which you have just emerged. Now, looking through the slanting light of the morning window toward the mountain presence of everything that can be, what urgency calls you to your one love? What shape waits in the seed of you to grow and spread its branches against a future sky? Is it waiting in the fertile sea, in the trees beyond the house, in the life you can imagine for yourself, in the open and lovely white page on the writing desk? Amen. And blessed be.